Okay, let me start off with a correction. So I've been working through these problems on this website, and I've been calling them Feynman lecture problems, and they're not, and I apologize for that. Uh, so these are a collection of problems uh, organized by uh, Mike Gottlieb, uh, and they're posted on Caltech's website. So they, these are the sources for the, the problems, and they're collected. Uh, so I'm going to work through them, and, and I will link to this is on that page. I just didn't pay attention because I'm just excited about problems. I just look at Feynman, and I go, oh, done. Uh, so the solutions and the exercises are, are from different people, uh, and, and make sure you look at where they come from. Um, but, but there you go. So let's get into the next problem and keep doing these. And this one's actually, I did look at this one briefly. Uh, so this one is... I have I remember in graduate school this being I think this was on a on an exam in graduate school uh, even though it's so I have seen this problem before and I actually don't remember how I solved it though so okay so let's look at the problem a uniform bowling ball of radius r and mass m is initially launched so that it is sliding with the speed v zero without rolling uh, with the coefficient of friction mu how far does the ball go before it starts to roll starts rolling without slipping, and then what is its speed? So, I mean, obviously there's friction, and there's going to be rolling. And, and for me, the thing that triggers me initially is the key word here, okay? And that's, that's this. How far? Normally, when I see that, what goes off in my mind is work energy. Because in the work energy principle, uh, we don't care about time. We get we get just uh, distances. Um, in this case, though, it doesn't. It does. It's not the easiest way to solve that problem. Okay, so let's set up the problem and uh, just just start writing. As with all problems, what you should do is just you know start with the diagram and then write down what you know. So let's start with the diagram. So here is my um, here's my my floor. And then here's my bowling ball. And it's going to start off with an initial speed V0. Now, what do I know about this bowling ball? I know all the forces acting on it. There's three. I have the downward gravitational force, mg. I have the upward force of the floor pushing up. Now, Normally, you would put this force, which is the normal force, and normally the normal force, uh, I, I should put it at the contact point. But it, it, it's going to get sloppy there, so I'm actually going to put it up here like that. Um, and then finally, if it's moving this way and sliding, then there is a frictional force, and that frictional force is down here at the bottom. I'll put it up a little bit so you can see it, and I'll call that F friction. Now, once it starts... Uh, rolling, this is going to go some distance. Uh, we'll call this distance d. That's how far it slid. At this point, it has a new velocity. I'll call this v2. Uh, and it is rolling with some angular velocity omega2. And if it is rolling, then it's no longer sliding. And if it's no longer sliding, there's no longer a friction force. But at this point, one of the important things about rolling without sliding is that there is a relationship between the velocity of the center mass and the angular velocity. So if this has a radius of r, then uh, omega 2 has to be equal to v2 over r in radians per second. That has to be true. This is the rolling condition. Okay, so we actually have two motions going on here. The first motion is I have this block sliding, and I'm just concerned about the center of mass. And then I have uh, a block that starts off not rotating, and it ends up rotating. So it's slowing down linear speed, and it's increasing in speed rotationally. So let's just, uh, first of all, I can find a magnitude for this friction force. I'm going to say this. Uh, in the in the if I call this the x and the y direction, uh, in the in x direction I can say f net. I'm sorry, y direction. The net force in the y direction. I have the normal force. I have the weight pulling down, and that has to be zero because the ball doesn't accelerate up or down. So with that, I can say the normal force is equal to mg. Now I want to warn you. I 
if, if you're new into physics, and this is a problem that I'm having by myself, this is dangerous, right? Um, the normal force is not always equal to the weight. It just happens to be equal to the weight here. Now I can use my model for friction. For sliding friction, for kinetic friction, I can say the magnitude of the friction force is equal to some coefficient of friction times the normal force. So this is going to be mu times mg. Now I can look at the same thing in the y direct, in the x direction. I can say f net x equals, well, what forces are in the x direction? It's just this one. So I have negative the friction, and that's going to be equal to m times a. And I'm just going to use a as the acceleration in the x direction, because the acceleration in the y direction is zero. So I can change this to negative mu m g equals m a or a equals negative mu g. And this is true for any sliding block, right? So the, the coefficient of friction doesn't change with velocity in this model. So the friction force is constant, so it should have a constant acceleration. Now, I know the value of that acceleration, but I don't know how long it takes, right? Because I can say this is equal to delta v over delta t, since it's constant acceleration. So it's v2 minus v0 over delta t. And I know that. I know my initial velocity. I don't know my final velocity, so, and I don't know my time. So I can't solve this equation. But it's still a good equation. OK. So now let's look at the angular side of this. So just like I have the f net equals ma, right? that's Newton's second law, I can write a similar equation for torque and angular acceleration. So I can say the net torque, and I'm going to use the scalar torque, about some point O is equal to I, the moment of inertia of that object, times alpha, the angular acceleration of that object. In this case, I'll consider the point O as the center of mass, and the force that's going to exert a torque is this frictional force. So torque, the real definition of torque, tor equals, torque equals R cross F. But since we're rotating in a two-dimensional plane, uh, I can just say this would be a negative torque. No, positive torque. Yeah, it's positive torque of just R, F, sine theta, where theta is the angle between those. So the torque, net torque, is just going to be uh, the friction force, F friction, times R. So that's going to be mu m g r. Now, I is the moment of inertia. This is the relationship between torque and angular acceleration. It's like the rotational mass. Um, for a sphere rotating about a center mass, that's going to be uh, I is, has a value of 2 fifths m r squared alpha. So again, the mass cancels. But then I, get a, I can get an expression for the angular acceleration. I get alpha equals 5 halves mu g over r, right? Because one of these r's cancel. Is that right? 5 halves. And so that, this is check the units. Mu has no units. This is in uh, meters per second squared divided by meters. It gives me 1 over second squared. So that is right. Angular, and this is going to be equal to delta omega over delta t, or omega 2 minus omega 0 over delta t. Now, I know omega 0 is 0, right? And, but I don't know delta t. So here I have this expression right here, and I have two expressions. Now, I do also know one other thing, right? I know this omega 2 is equal to v2 over r. So in fact, in these two equations, don't worry about the alpha and the a, I don't know delta t and I don't know v2, but now I have two equations, two unknowns. Okay, let's get another piece of paper. And let me write down my, my two, actually, so I guess I have three equations. So let's just put, um, right, I'm going to replace uh, the omega 2. So the first equation I had was negative mu g equals v2 minus v0 over delta t. And then the other one I have is uh, 5 halves mu g over r equals omega 2, which is going to be v2 over r delta t minus omega 0, which is, which is 0. 
So these R's actually cancel. Uh, and let's solve this for a delta T. We've got to solve one of them for delta T. That one has, let's just do this. So I'm going to say uh, V2 equals 5 halves mu G delta T. I multiply both sides by delta T. And to divide by this, I get delta T equals uh, 2 fifths V2 over mu G. Just a quick check of the units. That's going to be meters per second divided by meters per second squared does give me indeed seconds. So that doesn't mean it's right, but if the unit's wrong, it does mean it's wrong. Now I can plug this delta T in up here. And really, I want to solve, let's solve this for V2. No, wait. Yeah. No. I'm going to just plug it in for delta T. Okay. So I'm going to actually multiply both sides by delta T first. So I get negative mu G delta T equals V2 minus V0. Uh, now I can plug in this delta T and I get negative mu g, and then I have 2 fifths v2 over mu g equals uh, v2 minus v0. And I want to solve for v2. So I am going to, uh, these that cancels, isn't that nice? So I'm going to, uh, let's add this to both sides and subtract that. So I get v0 equals v2 plus 2 fifths v2. And so then that is going to be equal to uh, 7 fifths v2. So v, v2 equals 5 sevenths v0. So now I have the final velocity. Um, notice that this is slower. 5 sevenths is less than 1, so it's slowed down. That's a good thing, right, if it's sped up. That would just be weird. Now I need to find the distance. Uh, I know the, the final velocity. I know the initial velocity is V0. So I can say uh, it is accelerating. I can say V average is going to be V2 plus V0 over 2. So that's going to be uh, V2 is this, 5 sevenths V0 plus V0 all of that over 2. So this is going to be 7 sevenths. Uh, is, so that's going to be 12 sevenths. And then I divide by 2, and I get 6 sevenths. That seems weird. 6 sevenths v0. And that's uh, delta x over delta t. The average velocity is delta x over delta t. So I want, oops. See, I shouldn't have done, I shouldn't have done that because now I don't have delta t. I do have delta t because I solved for it up here, but I'm just making a mess. Okay, let's just use the kinematic equation, um, there, which is what I was getting to. So I have this kinematic equation, v2 squared equals v0 squared plus 2a delta x. So I know a, a is, oh, that's, that's right, negative mu g, right? I already wrote that down. Uh, I want to solve, I know all these things. I want to solve for delta x, which is d. So delta x equals v2 squared minus v0 squared, all of that over 2a. That's, and that's going to be d. So I have v2 is going to be 5, what did, this, what did I just say? Seven, 5 sevenths. So it's going to be 5 sevenths squared times v0 squared minus v0 squared, all of that over 2 negative, yeah, negative 2 times mu times g. And that's good because this is going to be smaller than that. So I get v0 squared times 25 over 49 minus 1, so minus 49 over 49, this seems wrong, over 2, negative 2 mu g. So that's going to be equal to 24, so negative 24. So I get d equals v0 squared. That's going to be negative 24 over 49, so it's just going to be 24 over 49, over 2 mu g, that 2 is going to cancel, and I get 12 
and the negative sign cancel too. 12 over 49 v0 squared over mu g. That, I just feel like it's weird. I mean, where's this 12 over 49 stuff, but, but whatever. Let's just check the units. So here I have uh, meters squared per second squared, and I divide by meters per second squared, and that does give me meters. So that at least gives me the right units. I'm, I'm kind of questioning this whole thing, but I think, I think it might be right. I'm gonna go with that. Um, now, I do want, I like this problem, and it's a classic problem. So I do want to solve it another way. I want to solve it in uh, Python. I want to animate it and solve it in Python because I think that'll be fun. Uh, and, and I'll do that in the next video. So I will put a, a link to the all the exercises. Um, I really should come up with a different name for this playlist, but I've already started. So I don't know what to do about that. I'm just going to keep on calling it fine. Hmm. I'm not sure. I'll think of a name. Okay. I'll just keep it Feynman lectures exercises for now. Um, and I'll, I'll try to come up with another name. But then I, I am going to post another solution to this with Python, uh, and that'll be in the playlist. The playlist is down below. The link to the websites with all the exercises on there. And there are solutions posted too. I have not looked at those solutions, but there are indeed solutions posted. So you should check that out. But really what you should do first is go to the site and try to solve these problems yourself before you watch this video. But I'm at the end of the video, so that's kind of weird for me to say. So I don't know, but the next problem, work out the problem first, and then you can come see my solution. Okay, I'll talk to you later.